and welcome to episode 10 of Dielectric Videos. So on today's episode, I'm going to be doing a spotlight on the Bolt Power G06 uh, battery brick, as I would usually refer to it. Uh, you, some people call these battery bricks, backup batteries, uh, car starter bricks, that kind of thing. And the point is, it's a highly versatile, multi-purpose uh, lithium polymer battery pack. Now, the control panel that you'll notice here has several unique features. If I turn the power switch on here, you'll see that uh, there's a charge indicator meter, uh, a USB output port, a thing that says engine start, and an output with several voltages labeled next to it. Now, if I press this button, I can select between 12 volts out, 16 volts out, and 19 volts out. And I'll show you exactly what that does in a second. Additionally, if you hold the power button down, a flashlight will turn on, which you can see here, and it's a reasonably bright one. It's significantly brighter than the flashlight on my iPhone, which is a good, very good thing. Additionally, if you press the power button down twice in quick succession, an emergency flare will turn on, and this will just blink continuously as long as you need it to. The flashlight doesn't have to be on for this to be operating, but it can be. And as you can see, the last input on the front is a 15 volt one amp uh, input, which is the charging port. You can charge it with any 15 volt DC source, really. Uh, even if it can't quite supply one amp, it will still charge it, as I've determined. Uh, the main thing is it has to be 15 volts because this is a three cell 11.1 volt lithium polymer battery. Now it says output for vehicle 12 volts, 16 volts, 19 volts. That's not quite accurate. The output for the vehicle, which is the engine start, will only output whatever the battery voltage is. This is connected directly to the three cell lithium polymer battery. And that three cell lithium polymer battery is an 11.1 volt nominal pack, which can go up to 12.6 volts maximum or down to 10 volts minimum. Now, the, uh, another interesting thing about this battery pack is it's actually, uh, this is a bit of a misnomer, it's rated as a 16500 milliamp hour battery, which would of course be a uh, very, very large battery if it was rated at 11.1 .1 volts. This is the cumulative uh, amp hour capacity of all three cells. Each cell is only a 5.5 amp hour uh, cell, not a 16500 milliamp hour cell for each one. That means the entire pack at 11.1 .1 volts only has a nominal capacity of 5.5 amp hours, which is still pretty good. It also gives the uh, watt hour rating of 61.05 watt hours, and that is accurate. That's the amount of uh, energy in this that can be stored in this battery optimally. Now it says that the start current is 300 amps with a peak of 600 amps for three seconds. Uh, this is actually pretty close to accurate. I was able to successfully start cars with this, and later in this video, I will actually be demonstrating it doing this. But my main use for this battery pack is not starting cars or anything like that. I actually use it most commonly for powering my laptop, my Dell XPS 13 laptop. Now this per, uh, battery outputs any of the three common, commonly available uh, voltages that computers tend to use, 19, 16, and 12 volts. This computer happens to be a 12 volt uh, or a 19 volt rather computer. Now it comes with a bunch of little uh, adapter plugs. However, the one that I needed for my computer, which is the Dell uh, small barrel connector, did not come with it. I had to purchase this cable connector separately and I had to use the barrel connector that did come with it on its uh, original cable to make this kind of long, seemingly convoluted cable. But when I uh, power this on and I select the voltage that I want, if I select 19 volts, since this computer does want 19 volts, I can connect this to the output like so and plug it in here. Now you see the little uh, charge light comes on for a second and then goes off. And if you look here, uh, it says not charging. It'll say the battery percentage and it'll say not charging. Because this Dell computer has its own proprietary charger, it will not accept a charge unless it can negotiate back and forth with the charger. Well, it does say fully charged. I'm not really sure why it did that. Uh, it's not actually doing any charging. I guess that would be because the battery or the computer battery was almost full anyway. If I disconnect it, you'll see it goes right back to 96%. 
It won't actually charge the battery, however, because the, there's no handshake with the circuitry in this uh, power brick. It just outputs the 19 volts. And because it just outputs the 19 volts, the Dell computer will not uh, allow its battery to be charged by it. That being said, however, the computer will run all of its functions off of this battery in lieu of its own battery. So that means even if you're doing fairly heavy processing, uh, the computer will never drop below 96% until this battery is fully depleted and this shuts off. Uh, once again, it did jump to 100%. That's just a glitch in the uh, monitoring drivers in the computer. It's not actually at 100%, it's at 96 So disregard that. But some computers, uh, particularly computers that don't have a charging, uh, a third charging pin that will talk back between the computer and the charger, will happily charge their own batteries. Uh, usually older computers and some HP computers will have no problems actually charging their batteries off of this. So it's great for me because as a student, I end up taking my computer on campus and using it all, uh, basically all day, and I don't usually have enough charge to actually do that. So this provides a nice uh, boost for the amount of charge that I have access to, and it also allows me to power my power inverters with it. If you watched my video on power inverters, uh, you'll see that I uh, was plugging them into the engine start output, and that works really well for this type of uh, power brick. The inverters will run happily on the lithium polymer output and really won't give the uh, power brake any trouble at all. Now the USB output uh, is uh, a 2.1 amp output and normally I'm a bit hesitant to plug my nice equipment into these uh, built-in USBs, but since this is actually a higher end uh, power brake, this one was about $90, I'm a bit more comfortable with operating my phone and things like that off of this. You can actually buy uh, bricks like this for much less money. They usually have less capacity. They'll be rated at 1300 milliamp hours instead of 16500, which once again is also a misnomer because you have to divide that by three, one for each cell. But you can also buy these down to about uh, 60 or $50 and the really low end ones you can get for 40. And I'm not sure, I haven't tested their performance as far as the uh, cranking amp output of the battery, but I assume they're all relatively comparable uh, assuming they have lithium polymer batteries in them. The lithium polymer batteries have a very low internal resistance and can deliver huge bursts of current for short periods of time. So now that I've shown you the basic functions of this battery and I've disconnected it, you can see the screen got darker since it's no longer uh, connected to AC uh, power. Uh, now that I've shown you the basic functions of this battery pack, I'm going to go out and uh, do a little demonstration of its actual cranking amp capacity. So without further ado, I will set that up and I will see you in a moment. So we're out at the dune buggy now, and as you can see, I have fully disconnected the negative terminal from the post of the battery. So this uh, is now completely, uh, the battery is completely taken out of the circuit at this point. There's no way for current to flow from the battery through the circuit and back to the positive in any way, shape, or form. So I've gotten the uh, Bolt Power G06 set up here and the cable clamps that it comes with. And I'm going to put the positive cable clamp on the positive terminal of the battery and kind of rub it in a bit to give it a good connection with that uh, lead terminal to make it nice and uh, nice and solid. And the negative, I'm going to connect not to the negative terminal of the battery, but to the negative cable clamp, which is how it's going to power the starter motor. So once I uh, get a good connection there, I can now introduce the actual battery pack itself into the equation. I've connected it like so, make sure that EC5 is really in there. And I will just uh, leave it, see if I can get it to where it's in a good uh, stable position. You want to make sure the battery pack doesn't fall. So I've got it set up like that. I'm going to now start the engine. 